Wikipedia is wrong when they explain fractional reserve banking. Go to Wikipedia, find fractional reserve banking, and they explain fractional reserve banking is the banking practice in which banks keep only a fraction of their deposits in reserve as cash and other highly liquid assets and lend out the remainder while maintaining the simultaneous obligation to redeem all deposits immediately upon demand. Now, the governor of the Bank of Canada, Graham Towers, said in 1939, the banks, of course, do not lend out their depositors' funds. And, of course, now we have Wikipedia here saying they lend out the remainder of their depositors' funds. Who's right? Not Wikipedia. Op-Ed Link teaches multipliers in the mystery of magic money. They teach it lends out the depositors' funds, too. Wrong. Courtfool.info. They teach that the banks lend out their depositors' funds, too, like a piggy bank. Wrong. We're going to go into that by examining the actual plumbing as we read how they describe it, and we'll see how wrong they obviously are when we got the blueprint in front of us. And, of course, I came up with the blueprint, the right blueprint. It's the only place you can look at the blueprint is in these videos, and now you're going to get a chance to see how they're all wrong. Money must be one incredibly confusing system for them to keep getting it wrong. So here's the Wikipedia article which says that uh, fractional reserve banking is the practice in which banks keep only a fraction of the deposits in reserve and lend out the remainder while maintaining the simultaneous obligation to redeem all deposits immediately upon demand. So what they do is they take in your deposit, lend it to someone out, but promise to give it back right away. Sounds terrible, doesn't it? So the benefits of fractional reserve banking, says Wikipedia, the world's authoritative dictionary. According to the United States Federal Reserve, well, you know they're going to get it wrong. Fractional reserve banking provides benefits to the economy and the banking system. Quote, the fact that banks are required to keep on hand only a fraction of the funds deposited with them is a function of the banking business. Banks borrow funds from their depositors, those with savings, and in turn lend those funds to borrowers, like a piggy bank, those in need of funds. Banks make money by charging borrowers more for a loan, a higher percent interest rate than is made paid to depositors for use of their money. So, you put your money in a piggy bank, you get interest, and they lend it out and they charge more. If banks did not lend out their available funds after meeting their reserve requirement, depositors might have to pay banks to provide safekeeping services for their money. For the economy and the banking system as a whole, the practice of keeping only a fraction of deposits on hand has an important cumulative effect. Referred to as the fractional reserve system, it permits the banking system to create money. Now you'll notice nowhere in there in this system of piggy banks have you seen a tap for the creation of new money. They explain how you put your money in your piggy bank, they lend it out to other depositors, and then all of a sudden, by doing that, you've got new money. But they don't explain how. Sad. How it works. Anyway, they take in their deposits, and the funds are already largely invested by the bank in interest-bearing loans. So that's Wikipedia. I'm not going to go further when the premise is wrong. Governor of the Bank of Canada said, and I bet he's right, the banks do not lend out their depositors' funds. Each and every time a bank makes a loan, they create new money. Econ Ed Link, same thing. He points out how, yes, the uncontrolled creation of money can create shift A inflation. Yeah, it's true. But then down here he says, talks about magic money. Magic money. So here we go now. The reserve requirement is one of the most important tools the Fed used to control the money supply. This is from econedlink.org. Under the reserve requirement, banks are required to hold a percentage of the deposits on account with the Fed or in their own vaults. Banks are prohibited from lending this money out to customers. Oh, we got this right. Oh, no, that's right. Stop. Uh, the monetary control, then this way the bank puts a limit on the growth of the money supply. 
So, but keeping 10% aside. The Monetary Control Act allows the Fed to set the reserve requirement from 8 to 14% based on economic conditions. The reserve requirement, 10%. Cut this piece out. Magic money is able to grow from our fractional reserve system because money deposited at a bank is largely loaned back out to customers. That's how they create new money. The reserve requirement places the limit on a bank's ability to do so. For example, if someone enters a deposit a thousand bucks into the local bank, the bank's actual reserves increase by a thousand. Because of the reserve requirement, those reserves will be divided into two separate funds, required reserves, which the bank must hold, and excess reserves, which the bank can lend to other customers, like a piggy bank. If the Fed sets the reserve requirement at 10%, the bank is required to hold on to 100 bucks, and it can lend the remaining 900 out to another customer. So, standard mistake all the time. It's free to lend out and then reserve. And then finally, court fool info in Secrets of Money, Interest, and Inflation. They explain about the way the banks make money. They make money by inscribing numbers on their balance sheet and lend it out. That's right. And on the lent out money, they collect interest. That's right. But then he goes into example. John comes in and deposits 1,000 euros. And now the bank is going to lend out the money that they can after the reserve. So again, they lend out 900. Next guy comes in, deposits 900, they can lend out 800. So it's the same piggy bank model they're teaching in this one too. All wrong. Now we're going to pull up the plumbing and read these again. <clears throat> Since Wikipedia, Econ Ed Link, and uh, Court Fool Info all treat the creation of money wrongly, I'll look at the Econ Ed Link's explanation of how money is created. But now we're watching the flows from the actual reservoir and pipe and drain that are in a real chartered bank. Remember, the governor of the Bank of Canada said each and every time a bank makes a loan, new bank credit is created, brand new money. So every new loan is new money out of a tap, unconnected to the reservoir. So here we go. They say, Magic money is able to grow from our fractional reserve piggy bank system. They didn't say piggy bank. Because money deposited at a bank is largely loaned back to other customers. So they're saying that when the money goes into the savings, the loan is coming out of the reservoir. And we're saying it doesn't. The reserve requirement places a limit on the bank's ability to do so. For example, if Tamika enters town with $1,000 to deposit into the local bank, the bank's actual reserves increase by 1000 bucks. Right, 1000 bucks in the reservoir goes up. Because of the reserve requirement, those reserves will be divided into two separate funds. Required reserves, which the bank must hold, and excess reserves, which the bank can lend to other customers. So put a dotted line a little bit in from the left-hand side of the reservoir, and let's say that the 10% on the left is the reserves they're holding for the Fed, and the other 90% on the right are the excess reserves that they can lend to other customers. Yeah, da, 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 da. So if the Fed sets a rate of 10%, the bank is required to hold on to 100 of the Tamika deposit on the left-hand side of the, of the line, and it can lend the remaining 900 to another customer. So, if that customer uses the money, now, first of all, presume that customer made the loan. They're saying that the 900 bucks from the reserve has now gone to the borrower, out the loan principal too. That's what they're saying. But they say, okay, if that customer uses the 900 bucks to buy something from Mary Lou, who then deposits that money back into the bank, the money supply grows to 1900 well, actually, we know there's only 100 left in the bank because they lent the other 900 out of the reservoir, right? So now she's saying by the addition of 900 into the reservoir added to the 100 that's left, we got 1,900. Well, you see, she forgot she took the 900 out of the reservoir to lend it out. And then she's pretending it's still there to be added up. Well, actually, it is still there to be added up. It never left the reservoir. That's why she says there's 1,900 in a reservoir, because it never left the reservoir. She just forgets there's a tap, and said since 900 went out, it must have been from the reservoir. And that is the mistake they all make. So, when you see something like Wikipedia and, you know, uh, Court Fool Info, and these are pretty big websites, 
you know, Econ Ed Link, economists giving lessons on how the banking system works like a series of piggy banks. And through the interaction of all these piggy banks, new money is created. So yeah, go out there, get yourself a whole bunch of empty piggy banks and create yourself some new money by putting in one deposit and watching it grow by moving it amongst piggy banks. Well, the stupid error is they presume the 900 out of the reservoir came out and at the same time, they pretended it stayed in. And that is the double thinker economics.